You're not. <laughs> <laughs> you staring at me makes me nervous. Okay. <laughs> so when she's talking, I'll just know you. We're on. <laughs> Luke, tell us more. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Iron Man Luke. Ooh, got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? How many days ago is it now? Uh, two days. Tuesday night. Did it on Sunday. So, yeah. 48. <laughs> just over 48 hours. And how are you feeling? Feel good. Um, energy levels are certainly not as high as they were leading into the Iron Man, but that's to be expected. Uh, body's pretty sore, pretty battered and bruised, but again, 48 hours after, that's to be expected. Um, yeah, no, I'm feeling alright, just focusing on recovering hard, eating well, looking after myself, and I'll come good pretty soon. So, do you want to talk us through swim, bike, run? I can do that. And how the day went. I can Maybe do we'll that. start from when you got up and everything. <laughs> Give everyone a blow by blow. Yeah, alright, well, I'll even go before that. Um, yeah, we got here Wednesday, Riley and I got here Wednesday <coughs> at midday, um, yeah, and being away from, from Melbourne and, and work and things like that, it was pretty relaxing, so I had a, had a couple of good nights sleep, um, the night before the race, Saturday night, the sleep was, was alright, but not... Not great. I've probably got maybe six hours or so. Just wake up a couple, couple of times during the night, and uh, you know, just struggled to get back to sleep. But was feeling pretty good. Um, yeah, had brekkie and headed down there, and was was feeling pretty fresh and raring to go, in pretty good spirits. So that was really good. Um, caught up with my family and everything at the start, and was surprisingly not very nervous. Um, which I have been in the past, um, was just taking it all in really and was just really ready to get stuck in. Um, I guess probably been working up to it for quite some time um, and the excitement probably took over more than, than anything else and just having the experience of doing quite a few half distances before helped a lot. So, so that was good. Um, started pretty close to the front of the, the rolling start of the swim. It's probably maybe like 15th into the water, so that was really good. Um, just took it really easy from the start, just focused on keeping it nice and smooth and consistent. Um, a few people got past me pretty quickly, which was to be expected. And then, yeah, just focused on smooth, consistent swimming. Didn't feel awesome, didn't feel very efficient, like I have done in the past in races, but I guess just tried to stay really relaxed knowing that it was a big day ahead. So that was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was certainly ready to get out of the water by the end. Actually started to feel kind of warm in the wetsuit by the end. And my calves were starting to get a little bit crampy. So um, it was good to get out of the water. Um, yeah, got out of the water just over an hour. So I was really, really chuffed with that time. Um, out onto the bike pretty quickly, was feeling good. Um, Again, on the bike, just tried to stay smooth and consistent and efficient. Um, was, was mostly riding by feel, but um, was keeping an eye on my power numbers and, and heart rate. Um, but again, just tried to keep it smooth and efficient. First lap of the bike was two lap, two lap, not two ninety lap, two ninety kilometer laps. Um, first first lap started to feel pretty nauseous pretty quickly. I think I probably took on. A little bit too much fluid um, and potentially nutrition as well at the start. Um, it wasn't super hot in the beginning but I was really conscious of trying to hit my, my fluid numbers and I think there was just a lot a lot of fluid in my stomach so I was feeling a bit blah near the end of the first lap um, and then kind of came in and my family and everyone was there cheering me on and that kind of lifted my spirits a bit. Uh, went through special needs and tried to pick up my bag and unzip that and take everything out before the litter zone ended. That didn't happen. Uh, and I made a, I guess, a promise to myself if I didn't have it all unpacked that I'd just pull over and take 30 seconds to unpack it. So I did that and that was a smart move. Uh, had a banana and that seemed to sort me out and I felt really good after that. So yeah, second lap of the bike went well, felt good throughout. 
Um, then it started to get quite hot, so I was taking on a lot of fluid, but wasn't having the same stomach issues, getting in and out of the saddle as much as I could just to, um, I guess, change things up a bit. Is it getting windy? Uh, I think the wind died down a bit from the first lap to the second lap. Um, but it got hotter. It got hotter. It definitely got <laughs> hotter. And I think the wind was noticeable, but the course is kind of set up in a way where you change directions mm. quite a lot. So you kind of don't really know which way it's coming at you. So that was good. And I was riding on my own for most of the second lap, actually, really kind of spread out. Um, yeah, coming in after that for trans... T2 uh, was feeling was feeling pretty good was definitely ready to get off the bike just more for the mental side of it I think to just to know that nothing mechanically was going to stop me from getting the job done so got off the bike yeah feeling pretty good put the runners on um, went out onto the run to, again just tried to keep it pretty smooth and efficient we spoke about um, keeping that zone 2 kind of heart rate I was probably a little bit above that I was trying to pull it back I guess I probably could tell from the beginning that it wasn't going to be a fast run, um, but the fact I've had a stress fracture in my foot for geez, two to three months now, haven't been doing any running, I wasn't really surprised by that. Um, the big positive was that I had no awareness of the injury at all, so that was really good. Um, yeah, it felt pretty good at the start, and then <laughs> it probably just slowly and progressively got more and more torturous. Um, I mean, my pace was relatively consistent, but definitely, definitely dropped away. Stuck to our plan, which was uh, five minutes on, 30 second walk, which worked out really well, just mentally breaking it up. Um, and just kind of, yeah, breaking it up and having something to focus on rather than the enormity of how many Ks you had left to go. Uh, yeah, I guess near the back end of the run, like I said, started to get really pretty brutal. So it was definitely a mental game trying to trying to finish a job. Stomach wasn't having a really good time. Uh, I was getting quite quite gassy, and just that thought of trying to put another gel in made you feel a bit ill. So I probably wasn't getting in the level of nutrition that I felt I needed, which may have had. Um, something to do with the, the energy levels near the end as well. Started to get quite tingly in the hands. Um, but yeah, just grounded out, kept focusing and kept fighting. Uh, again, every time I'd do a lap, family and friends were gone absolutely bananas on the sidelines. So that lifted my spirits and just helped me to, to keep powering on. Um, yeah, and then got to the finish line and just the best feeling ever. Um, Everyone came running down and cheering. It was just, it was just awesome. So, worth it. Absolutely. Um, doing another one. Yep, doing another one. <laughs> time, uh, time, time. My time was nine hours forty-five. So, nine hours forty-five and fourteen seconds, I think. So, splits, look, splits one hour and thirty seconds in the swim, uh, four hour fifty bike ride, and then a three forty-six run. So look really really tough to get sub 10 hours um, you're always looking at where you can improve um, I know I can do a lot lot better on the run but the fact that I hadn't been running just being able to be here when I didn't think I'd well I thought I might not even get here and be able to do the event um, that was a huge plus and to be able to pull out what's only my second marathon in that kind of time I'm pretty pretty stoked with that so Certainly on the day, the thought of doing Cairns, which is my next one in six months, um, <laughs> wasn't something I was looking forward to, but look, you give it 24, 48 hours and it's like, yeah, let's give it another crack. So, um, looking forward to it. What was the best thing about the day? Just... If you could pick one moment or one thing. The, the thing is just my family and friends. I mean, I had a contingent of about... Half of WA, yeah, half of WA. WA. they were unbelievable. Signs, just going bananas with bells, you know, every time I came close to transition and like I said on the run, you, you go past them about eight times, they were just going nuts. Um, and it just makes such a difference and getting to see them at the finish line and, you know, 
they they seem to feel inspired by what I was doing, you know, and that's <clears throat> that that means the most more than anything. The fact that you're pushing testing yourself and pushing your limits but when you hear about little things about how you're inspiring other people for something that doesn't seem that enormous to you I guess it, like it's a big thing but I mean the fact that it's inspiring other people to do things is um, is really cool pretty so. cool extra reward yeah absolutely and could you pick the hardest part of your day the, <laughs> the hardest part of my day was lap four of the run running away from the finish line <laughs> so I think I had seven or eight kilometers to go and as soon as I hit the turnaround mark I was running back and I would have had yeah three and a half four k's to go but that was just absolute torture and even turning around coming back just looking at the road ahead going I can't see the next turning point <laughs> yeah um I'm so close, but this is so hard. <laughs> and just making deals with myself that if you do this five minutes of running, you get to walk for 30 seconds. And if you do that in 30 minutes time, you can sit, sit down. down. Sit down. So, sit down. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do straight after the race? Um, oh, I was pretty low key actually, just spent a bit of time with the family, sat down on the grass, <laughs> um, took in some food, just caught up with some mates, just had lots of food and then yeah, tried to get to sleep and that didn't work out too well, <laughs> which is always the case after a race. Iron Man Licks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was there anything surprised you about the day? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I've, I'm really, really chuffed with my swim and bike performance. So that su like surprised you that you were able to... To, to a degree. To that level? Uh, yeah, to a degree. I guess probably what's the unknown is that can I do that? then plus running fitness yeah. pull out of you know a marathon that's 15 to 30 minutes quicker mm -hmm. um, which I deep down think that I can do and the proof's in the pudding all of the swim and, and bike work that I've been doing it, it, paid dividends. it's paid dividends yeah exactly so um, yeah coach you got any more questions what about your your thoughts on how he executed the plan uh, he pretty much nailed the plan Luke is a very good athlete for coach because he he's engaged in the process and then he also asks questions if things don't make sense but he also executes what is asked of him um, and that's not just the training the obvious stuff it's the the stuff behind the scenes that we don't see um, your other athletes don't necessarily see, necessarily see so his eating his drinking his hydration so there's daily habits that we talk about and I think it's that's why it's paid off to someone to have a his first Ironman and it sort of go as we planned and as we expected, potentially even slightly better. Um, so it's it's good to see him rewarded for that. Um, and I agree with him. There's there's definitely more to come, which is exciting. Um, but as we always say, it's like it's one thing knowing you can do more, and then we've actually got to go down, you know, sit down, debrief, and then sort of make the plan and actually just execute it and then get to the next race and he's actually got to make it happen, happen come race day, which is obviously very hard to do. It's easier said than done. But we already know there's things we can refine um, from what he's learnt from race day experience, which is invaluable. Like I could sit down for hours and talk to him about different things I've learnt or for him to look out for, but him actually learning it for himself is... is is um, very valuable, so it's pretty cool. So Luke, oh, locked and, and loaded for your next one? Uh, oh, not just yet. <laughs> Got to just really take a, a week or two to relax, which I don't do very well, um, or don't usually do. But I really want to give myself some time. Been building up to this one for quite a while, so um, spend some time with the family, which will be good over here in WA. Um, but yeah, look, it's not going to take long before I'm pumped to get back into it and get back into the training, number one, because I love the training so much. So um, My tip is you'll be asking me sooner rather than later. But he'll be wait we'll be waiting two to four weeks to have any to anything too structured. I've got I've got a pretty good hard. I've got a pretty good period ahead of me because it's so close to Christmas and then there's a Christmas break and I'm going away and I can use that as a little bit of a training block if I want to. 
but it can be pretty pretty relaxed as well. So the timing of the race is pretty good. It's not, um, although it's mid season, um, it's yeah, it's just timed well because at the end of the year, I think there's plenty of time for us to do a full cycle. Yeah, yeah, of phases yeah. and then get to his race. I'm gonna put him on the spot unless you got any more questions. I'm out. Top three tips for someone doing their first Ironman. Hmm. Um, stay relaxed and and focused on, I guess, how big of a day it is. So don't get ahead of yourself. So um, do one one bit at a time. Segment the race. One bit at a time. Yeah, segment the race, but just focus on staying relaxed. I think you know, don't get caught up in anything that's going on. Like for example, there's times on the swim where people would move off ahead of me, and it'd be nice to stay on their toes. But I just went whatever. They can go. I don't care. I'm just staying relaxed and focusing on my race. Yes, you're in race. Um, obviously, nutrition and fluids is a big one. Um, I definitely don't think that I nailed that. I had a couple of little malfunctions where I lost things, and like I said about my stomach, um, I think that's absolutely crucial. Um, and I mean, enjoy it. Like, make the most of it. Don't get. It's really easy to get carried away in. Um, anxiety or stress and putting pressure on yourself um, which I definitely do um, more than most but it's just it's a culmination of all the hard work that you've done you know it's it's you spend weeks and months training um, that final day is really just the last yeah the celebration Enjoy. yeah See what you can do. exactly so yeah race your own race Think about your nutrition and hydration and enjoy it. Yep. Pretty good. Right. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks very much.